Okay, here's 11 um, through 19 odd on the 16A worksheet. So let's just jump right back in. Remember, these are our three steps. Um, so for number 11, let's start by copying our given information. Make sure it's in our picture. So the measure of angle PQR, sorry, QPR, <laughs> this one is equal to this one. They're both 90 degrees. And it also says that segment QR is congruent to segment PU. Okay, we've done our given. So let's go on to our next step. Do we have any vertical angles? I don't see any. Do we have any shared sides? I see one right here. So let's put that in our proof. So the reason I do different colors, the green I always do is the given, the red I do as things I have to add and give a reason other than given. You don't have to do it that way, I just find it helpful for me. So let's keep going. I need to say that RP is congruent to itself. You could either do RP again or PR. The reason I'm switching it is if you look at our proof, this is our congruency statement, PR matches up with RP. So that's why I'm doing that. We'll talk more about that um, in a day or so, but um, that's my reflexive property of congruent things, something's congruent to itself. Well, now I have three pieces of information in each, so I'm gonna look. I have an angle and two sides. The angle is not directly in between two sides. That would have been here, so that's gonna be ASS. But wait a minute, ASS is no good. But we said when we have a right triangle and we have ASS, that's a special case called HL. So I need to check. Did I show that it was a right triangle? Yep, this is enough. Do I have the hypotenuse, so P, U, and Q, R? Yep and I have a leg right here, good. So I have enough for HL, so now I can say that triangle QP congruent to triangle URP by HL. Okay, let's keep going. We're gonna skip down to 13, because we're just doing the odds today. You need to finish the rest for homework on your own, and we'll go over it next class. Okay, number 13. Let's start with our given. So we have the angle H, G, F is congruent to angle R, G, F, and angle H is congruent to angle R. So H, G, F, here it is. R, G, F, here it is. H is congruent to R, so that's all given, and it's in our picture now. Vertical angles, nope, we don't have any. Shared sides, yes, we have a shared side. So let's add that to our proof. FG is congruent to itself. FG matches with FG. That's the reflexive property of congruence. Now I have three pieces of information. If I look, I have two angles. The side is not directly in between. So that's gonna be AAS. I have a pair of angles, a second pair of angles, a pair of shared sides. So now I can prove that my triangles are congruent because of A, A, S. That was my last step, my congruence postulator theorem. Okay, on to 15. Okay. Now, we no longer have the steps shown out for you, so you need to figure by yourself how many steps there are, but if we just go through this process, we'll be just fine. So we always start by copying out our given. I have two pieces of given information. And I like to make sure it's in my drawing. So WX is parallel to YZ, good. WX, segment WX is congruent to segment at YZ. That's in my picture too, we're good. Let's go through our checklist. No vertical angles. I see one set of shared sides. So I can say that um, XZ is congruent to ZX. That's the reflexive property of congruence. Now, some of you, I remembered on tests, don't always put your numbers. You need to match these numbers so we know what reason goes with what statement. So make sure we're numbering everything. Okay, number three. I only have two pieces of information. This parallel doesn't tell me anything about this side other than it's the same direction as this. Um, so I need something else. But because I have parallel lines, I can do my Z. So I did a Z with my two parallel lines. The angles that it captures, 
So see how this angle is captured by the two yellows? Not this one, there's not yellow here. This is captured by two yellows. This is captured by the two yellows. So angle W, X, Z is congruent to angle Y, Z, X, this one here. Because of the alternate interior angles theorem. If you can make the Z, we have alternate interior angles. Okay, now I have three pieces of information. I have two sides and an angle directly in between. That's my included angle. See how this side and this side meet at this vertex and that's the angle that's marked. So that's gonna be S, A, S. That says sides are parallel. This says sides are congruent. Pair of sides that are congruent. Pair of angles that are congruent. So I can say my triangles are congruent by S, A, S. Okay, we got two more odds to do together. Start with number 17. This one's tricky, so I shouldn't do it for you. I want you to try it by yourself. Um, even, I, I am gonna do it, but please try it by yourself if you can. This is a tricky one. It's got something a little different that we haven't done before, and so I want you to see if you can come up with it, but um, I will jump in. Go ahead and just pause the video to try it yourself before you watch, though. Let's start with our givens. Oopsies, Q, R is congruent to segment ST. Segment PQ is congruent to segment QS. And segment QR is parallel to segment ST. That was all given. Let's make sure it's in our picture. So QR, here it is, is congruent to segment ST. Segment PQ is congruent to segment QS. And these two lines are parallel. Now, I can make this Z here with the parallel lines, but the problem with that Z is I'm capturing something that's not in one of the two triangles. So capturing that and that isn't helpful for those two. So let me show you something else. Here's parallel line set here. And then here's a transversal right there. So here's intersection one. Here's intersection two. I hope you'll notice that this angle here and this angle here are both in the top right of their intersections. Whenever we have two things that are at the same spot in the intersection, we call them corresponding angles. And because we have parallel lines, our corresponding angles are gonna be congruent. So this is gonna be angle PQR. This is angle QST, this one right here, QST. And that's because of the corresponding angles Postulate. That's what makes this one a little different. We're not doing alternate interior angles. We have corresponding angles. So I kind of skipped the going through this, but we have our given. We don't have vertical angles. Um, we don't have a shared side. So we did our parallel lines, so we're doing good. Um, and we have three pieces of information. We have two sides and an included angle. That's going to be S, A, S. Pair of sides. Pair of sides parallel sides, but that's not what we need for this checklist. Congruent angles, that's what we need. So now we can say that triangle PQR is congruent to triangle QST because of our congruence postulate SAS. Okay, here's our last one. Start by writing all of our, oh, number 19. Start by writing all of our given information. Segment AB is congruent to segment DC. And then AB, segment AB is parallel to segment CD. That's given. Let's mark it in our picture. So segment AB over segment DC. AB is parallel to DC. Okay, let's go through our checklist. Vertical angles, yes. So that's the vertical angles theorem. Shared sides, nope. Parallel lines, yes. And I can make my Z and capture things inside my triangles. Now you could do the Z two different ways. You could do it this way, or you could have done it this way. Both work. They'll give you slightly different end results, but they both work just fine. So angle B was captured. Angle C was captured. So angle B 
is congruent to angle C. I can use one letter because angle B, that's the only option for angle B, that's the only option for angle C. So that's the alternate interior angles theorem. Two angles, a side that's not directly in between, we call that non-included, so that's AAS. A pair of sides that are congruent, sorry, parallel sides, that doesn't help us for our checklist. Congruent angles, congruent angles. We've got all three in our proof, so now I can say that my two triangles, which again, I'm pulling just from here, so this is always the first statement, this is always the last statement. And they're congruent by AAS. Okay, well, I hope that video um, was helpful to you. Remember, we have a quiz on this in two class periods. Um, so use this video to help you study as well for the quiz.